four basics that you'll find in the first challenge. Here's loops. So let's take a look at this one. This is a one way to make a loop. And what you do is you define a paragraph. So I have an A paragraph and I have a B paragraph. This is a subroutine is what you could call it. So down here, I display something and add one to the number. And this is the loop. Perform what's in the B paragraph with a test after each execution until numbers greater than three. And this adds one to number each time. And the num starts with a value zero. So here's something we haven't done before, I think. We define a variable with a name and a picture to say what it is. This is a one digit number and a starting value with a period there. So now this will loop through this, starting at zero and adding afterwards until number greater than three, and then stop the run after that. So that's one way to make a loop, and that is loop. I think I've already compiled that. So that will go zero, one, two, three. That's one way to make a loop. And there's another way where you do not need to use a separate paragraph. Um, and that is down here. You can just make one where you say perform varying num from one to one until num greater than four, and then you put the contents there. So this entire structure from perform to end perform is like a for loop. And one thing that you might easily miss is the period. You do not put a period on this line or this line. This entire loop is one sentence and you put a period there. If you put a period in the wrong place, you'll get error messages. And I found that a little bizarre. You had to get used to that. Anyway, so that's another way to make a loop. And the other technique here is how to convert a string to a number. And this is really bizarre, very different than any other language. But it all comes from um, something we were talking about before the challenge started here. The whole point of this stuff is to be efficient and very conservative about memory and processing power. So you do not casually create a new object in memory the way you would in a modern language like Python. You're very stingy about memory. So what you do here is you define an alphabetic variable. Well, this is a five digit number. So this is a numeric variable with five digits. And then I have a second pointer to the same memory location that interprets it as alphabetic. So they're both referring to the same storage. So you can print them both out. You can print out A and B, and you can add five to A. And of course, when you do, you've added five as a number to a numeric variable, but the string variable is going to have the altered value. So that started at one, two, three, four, five. And when you added five to it, it's one, two, three, 50. But the string is also one, two, three, 50. It's not like you would have it in a more modern language where the string would be a separate data storage and adding five would have a different result. You're just looking at the same memory a different way. So you, uh, that is how you handle the comparison between strings and numbers. And so anyway, now there's a few challenges to solve. I think this is one of the toughest ones, making the rail French cipher, where you write your plain text this way, and then you read it off that way. So it's a way of rearranging letters, a transposition cipher. Anyway, that's all I wanted to put in that one. And